Hi, uh, in this lecture, I would like to cover a pretty interesting problem that also might be of some practical interest. And the question is that of um, two, two small spherical shaped conductors, one here and one over there, which are connected by a wire, um, which forces the two spheres to be on the, uh, to share the same potential and also allows some charge flows to take place between uh, from one conductor to the other. And I, I placed such a coupled conductor system in the presence of an electric field, E0, which I assume to be a uniform uh, field. And, um, and then I ask um, if there's any charge induced on, on one conductor and uh, it's negative amount of charge induced on the other conductor. So when they're not connected, um, obviously each conductor remains in a charge neutral state. However, because they're connected, it's possible that certain charges flow from one side of the system to the other in order to lower the energy, potential electrostatic energy, of course. Um, so now we're going to ask whether there's any way to compute this um, induced charge, if any, uh, on these um, spherical conductors. And I'm going to assume that each sphere has a radius R2 and R1 over here. Um, okay, so um, can we solve this problem? Well, the clue to the solution is, as I mentioned earlier, is that these two potentials have to be equal. So the potential on the surface of the first conductor better be equal to the potential on the surface of the second conductor because they're connected by a wire, which itself has no potential drop across, across that. And so our task is to compute the uh, potential of each of these uh, metallic spheres and set them equal to zero and see what consequences would result from that equality. So what are these potentials? Well, since uh, these conductors are, by assumption, uh, rather tiny and they're far separated from each other, uh, to a first approximation, they can be regarded as points. So if I take the center of mass of the first conductor as uh, little r1, and the uh, center of mass of the second conductor as little r2, then their potential due to the uh, uniform electric field is given by these familiar expressions as the inner product between the electric field vector and the coordinate vector. Um, however, that's not all, uh, because remember this is also um, this is also a sphere. So uh, a, a spherical shaped conductor with a total charge Q sitting on it has the potential uh, equal to uh, equal to to this form. Okay, so these two uh, pieces of potentials have to be added together to make up the total potential, which then would be uh, this thing for the first conductor and uh, this thing for the second conductor. And remember, uh, notice that the, these uh, signs are different because one has the negative charge and the, the other one has a positive charge sitting on it. And, and yet they're equal. So this expression has to equal that expression over here. And that gives us this equality that we were looking for. So you can phrase this um, as an equation for Q, which depends on this inner product and, and various other geometric factors like R1, R2, and their sum. Um, so this is nice because, because once you know the strength of the electric field and uh, the, the separation of the conductors and 
this geometrical factors like the radius of each conductor, then you can immediately compute um, without having to do any measurement uh, of the charge itself, you can compute what is the charge induced on each conductor. Okay, so and the other, the second interesting problem I want to address today is the problem of screening. Um, as you probably know, conductors can screen electric field. And what screening means is that uh, a conductor placed in the presence of uh, some external electric field would not allow any electric field whatsoever to penetrate uh, to the inside. Uh, but that we already knew. Uh, but what I want to mention today is the fact that if you cut out a hollow region inside a conductor, that hollow region still feels nothing. Uh, no electric field whatsoever. So if you're someone living inside this uh, cage, metallic cage, then you would not be able to detect any uh, electric field coming from the outside. So if your skin, let's say, was allergic to the electric field, then perhaps the best option for you is to live inside this uh, cage made out of metals. And actually, this is not a joke. In fact, um, this sort of device is called the Faraday's cage. Faraday's cage is basically like a bird cage made of uh, metallic wires. So metallic wires uh, effectively screen out the electric field coming from outside. So if you have a cell phone and go inside one of these uh, Faraday cages, then, then basically your cell phone won't work because the, the phone signals won't be able to transmit to the inside of the cage because of this uh, effect uh, of shielding or screening. Okay, so that was the claim, but how do I prove this to be the case? Well, uh, the proof is quite elegant and uh, uses uh, Stokes' theorem in a pretty clever way. So, now, let's suppose the contrary. Suppose the, this hollow region uh, here was, in fact, permeated with uh, electric field. Then, the electric field better start from some point on the interior surface. By interior surface, I mean, uh, I mean this surface then this electric field must start from some point on the, uh, on, on the interior surface and must also end at some other point on the interior surface. And examples are like this line here and, and this line here, these lines. I mean, let, I'm just drawing them as illustrations. Okay, so suppose such a field distribution did exist inside the hollow region of a conductor. And then we will work out the consequences and ultimately uh, lead to the opposite conclusion, which is that no such electric field can possibly exist. Okay, so how do I prove the contradiction? Well, I draw a closed path. So part of the closed path exactly follows the assumed electric field line in the hollow region. And the, the other part of the path traces out some curve uh, on the inside of the conductor. Okay, together they make up a closed path like this. And and then I want to ca calculate the line integral uh, around such a closed path. Now, by invoking Stokes' theorem, 
this line integral can be converted to a surface integral of the curl of the electric field. Um, however, uh, the curl of the field is zero because electric field is the gradient of a potential for static fields anyway. And, and this, uh, this uh, expression is famously known to be zero by a simple vector identity. Uh, so we must conclude that this uh, electric field line integral has to be zero. Okay, that's where the use of the Stokes theorem uh, comes into play. But we also know that electric fields do not exist in the interior of the conductor. So the line integral uh, along, the, along the path 2 over here, that also has to exist, has to, has to uh, vanish. So if the line integral along the path 2, path 2 has to vanish, and then the line integral along the combined path 1 and 2 has to vanish, that would only mean that the line integral along the path 1 has to vanish. Okay, so that's the conclusion, logical conclusion. However, remember that we chose this path we chose this path from the beginning to exactly follow the electric field line, which means that this dl vector is always parallel to the e vector no matter where you are on this path, which means that the inner product is at least non-negative. It may be zero, but at least it cannot be negative. However, the sum of the non-negative numbers equals zero. That's the conclusion. And the only way for that conclusion to hold is if this individual integration element is zero. Uh, and the only way for this to be zero is if there was no electric field at all. That's the only possibility. Okay. And that leads us to the conclusion that uh, there can be no electric field whatsoever in the hollow region surrounded completely by a conductor. And that's a pretty neat conclusion and a pretty practical one as well. However, interesting... Uh, changes happen if you put an extra charge, say Q, uh, in the hollow region of, of the conductor, then the previous argument fails. Because quite obviously this uh, extra charge will emanate electric field like this. Uh, and there's no way that this field can be completely screened out. Uh, so that implies that the previous argument had a loophole or weakness that this new situation is exploding. Uh, so what is that loophole? Well, in this case, it's pretty much impossible to make a path that exactly follows the field line. So field line is emanating outward like this. And therefore, it's impossible to draw a, a path which exactly follow these uh, field lines uh, due to an uh, isolated charge. So this is a very assumption that we will be uh, we will be choosing the path that exactly follows the field lines of the electric field that exist on the interior in the hollow region that assumption breaks down. And therefore, the line integral does not have to vanish anymore. Well, anyway, uh, well, I mean, this whole, whole setup of the proof basically breaks down once you have an uh, extra charge placed inside like this. Okay, so that's it for today. Thank you.